Let's hear from Matthew Dix. Oh, right here. When I graduated from high school, I moved out of my parents' house and started living on my own, as was the expectation. My parents didn't tell me I had to move out, but they gave me some not-so-subtle clues to send the message. For my 16th birthday, I received a set of bath towels and a blender. For my seven, this is true. For my 17th birthday, I received flatware and a box of pots and pans. And on Christmas Eve of my 18th year, I got a microwave, a vacuum, and a box of cookbooks. And so I took the message and I left. And I moved in with my friend Benji, who was going to Bryant College in Rhode Island, and he was looking to move off campus, so I moved in with him. And right away, Benji and I clashed because we had different views of what the apartment should look like. Benji put in our kitchen and our dining room posters of Looney Tunes characters, obscure 80s metal bands like the Sleazebees, and half-naked supermodels all over the house. He bought hundreds of dollars worth of hamster gear and had terrariums in each one of the rooms with tubes connecting them all over so the hamsters had like free reign of the house. And he had a basket of Playboys in the bathroom by the toilet. I envisioned our apartment as being like an adult space with furniture and art on the walls and like hand soap in the bathrooms. I actually had a vision that we'd come home at night and sit and have dinner together and talk about our day. I didn't realize it then, but I think what I was trying to do is to create a functional home after a childhood of so much dysfunction. But the result was I was 18 years old and I was going on 48. And then one day I met Jen. The first time I saw Jen, she was sitting on my kitchen table. She was throwing popcorn in the air and trying to catch it with her mouth. And my first thought when I saw her was, why is that girl on my kitchen table? That's totally inappropriate. <laughs> and then my second thought was, there's popcorn all over the floor. Who's going to pick that? I'm going to pick that up. <laughs> but then my, I was 18, so my penis went into action, and it alerted to me that this is a hot girl sitting on your kitchen table. And Jen and I hit it off right away. Jen was the kind of girl that Zoe Deschanel plays in movies today. She was like this wispy, pixie kind of girl who did everything different than everyone else. Jen believed you should never have sex in a bed because you have a lifetime to have sex in a bed. So we had sex everywhere but a bed, which sounds really nice, except at like 11.30 at night when you're tired, and she has a blanket in her hand, and she says we have to run across Route 3 again to go have sex in the cemetery at another gravestone. Or, please pull into the 7-Eleven, we'll go behind and have sex, because we've never had sex behind a 7-Eleven before. Jen instituted pillow fights in our house, we'd turn all the lights out, and we'd just wallop each other for an hour. And we'd take like the cushions from the couch, so you'd end up with these scratches from the zippers. And they ended up being like badges of honor when the lights came on. She was fabulous. She was the antidote for my premature aging, and she pushed me at every moment. And so one day she came to my house and she said, I heard there's a two-headed cow at the Virginia State Fair, and I want to see it. And at this point, I loved Jen. So I didn't want to go, but I said, okay, we'll go. When? And she said, we need to leave now because the fair closes tomorrow. <laughs> now, I was working that night and the next two days, and I had been working full-time since I was 16 years old, and I was that jackass who had never missed a day of work. And I said, I can't go. I can't miss a day of work. And Jen said, no problem. I'll find someone else to go. And I knew that that meant she was gonna like drive to the 7-Eleven and pick up one of those guys who has like the slurp slurpees next to the door. She would just take whoever, because that's who she was. So it was more lust than wander that got me into the truck <laughs> and sent me to the Virginia State Fair and had me call out of work for the first time in my life. So 24 hours later, we were at the Virginia State Fair. I had paid my $5 to see the two-headed cow, which I thought was gonna be like this piece of plastic, but it was an actual two-headed cow, or more like an amalgamation of two cows. It was the most horrifying thing I've seen. <laughs> it was like a blob of cow with two heads and an occasional leg. It really was awful. But Jen, who would one day become a veterinarian for the US Army, thought it was the most fascinating thing in the world.
We spent 45 minutes looking at the two-headed cow. And when we were done at the fair, we went back to the truck and we didn't have money for a hotel, so we pulled down our dirt road and parked like in the woods for the night to spend the night. And we laid in the back of her truck and I tried to go to sleep. And while I was lying there, I was so angry. I had driven 14 hours. I was gonna miss three days of work to see a blob of a two-headed cow. And I just thought, what an idiot you are. Like, you need to be more grown up. You need to be more sensible and to be more mature. And that's how I felt when I went to sleep. And then it, in the middle of the night, I woke up. Something was licking my feet that were hanging out of the back of the truck. And I opened my eyes, and it was a deer licking my foot. Now, it was hot, and my feet were probably like a salt lick to the deer. It was beautiful though, it really was. I can see that deer today. And so I nudged Jen to wake her up and as soon as I moved, it took off. And I remember lying there and thinking, hopefully I will forget someday about the two-headed cow. <laughs> but I will, I will never forget that deer and I haven't. I can still see it today. And Jen may have been the antidote for my premature aging, but that deer was too. I remember at that moment I decided that there are gonna be times in my life where I do really stupid, insane, nonsensical things. And sometimes I'll end up with something as beautiful as that. Thank you. <laughs>